I talk to artists almost every month. I do a column called In Defense of a Thousand True Fans, which I'm a strong believer in. And what that means is all you need is a thousand true fans who give you a hundred bucks a year each to make a really, really nice living. Okay? So I spoke to an artist just last week. He called me up and he had done a pledge music campaign and he had just raised $10,300. He's sitting in a library in the middle of um, Maryland recording his album alone. He's a folk, folk musician, amazing. And he created little videos that he put out on the internet talking about how he would like money to record this album. And 103 fans sent him over $10,000 because they loved him, they're friends with him, he moved and touched and inspired them somewhere along the way. This is the power of understanding your audience on a micro level. This has nothing to do with wanting to impress thousands of people so that they follow you. And I, I hear these stories all <coughs> the time. This to me is the future of the industry. There's almost 100 people in this room. $10,000 could come from you guys for something big for an artist. So, we're now on Facebook and we're on Twitter and we're using them in this macro sense because we, we just didn't learn any better because we're not born with this stuff. Next one. Um, first time I went to Australia as a direct result of coming here to Australia um, because of the OCFF, I met an amazing man um, named Dr. David Carter. And David Carter had just completed a very <coughs> interesting study of 400 independent musicians and he had access to their sales, their online sales statistics. And he was looking at what created sales versus what did not. And it was a very simple conclusion. Six things created sales. MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Last.fm, and your own website. Artists that had those six things in place and were using them in some sort of consistent way were outselling artists that did not. The other thing that he noticed was it all starts with a home page. The artists that were using MySpace as their home page, or Reverb Nation as their home page, or Facebook as their home page, did not have the sales. Why? They were not in control of the message. And I'll show you another reason why on a slide in a minute. 50% of artists that he looked at completely forgot to put a link to purchase the album <coughs> anywhere on their websites. Who here has links to purchase their albums on iTunes on their websites? Who does not? Oops. Whose music is on iTunes? Who here has their music on iTunes and has never purchased their own music on iTunes? Okay, that's equivalent to cooking dinner for 3,000 of your friends and not tasting it to see if you salted it correctly. Go buy your own music on iTunes and understand what the experience is. How could you possibly be cooking dinner for people if you don't know what that's like. Another thing to know, if you have reviews on iTunes, your um, sales will go up. If you have reviews of your music posted on your iTunes page, you're more likely to sell. Um, okay, so the whole thing can be found at bit.ly.com forward slash musicadium. Next slide, please. Oh, sorry, one before. There we go. So. This is another thing that went seriously wrong, and this is one of my favorite slides to show because it's kind of mind-blowing. This is a study that Topspin did. Topspin's a music marketing company that helps artists connect to fans, and they call it direct-to-fan engagement, and this is what I truly believe in. This is what he does in the real world. This is what I do on the online world. This chart shows all the money that went into artists' pockets through digital marketing and sales in a digital formats. The most important piece to look at is that green piece of the pie. 30% of all money that went into artists' pockets originated at an email. If you do not have a newsletter, an email newsletter that's going out regularly and consistently, you're missing out on a lot of money. The other pieces that I think are really important to look at here are those three at the bottom, actually four. Wikipedia, 1%, Twitter, 1%, Facebook, 2%, MySpace, this is now old, I would question this at this moment, 5%. How many people here spend more than 2% of their time on Facebook when you're online? Problem. Now look, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be on Facebook. You absolutely should. It's a great place to engage. It's not where you're going to make the sale. 
and artists come to me all the time and say, I'm spending all my time, I'm Facebooking, I'm Twittering, I'm tweeting, I'm updating, I'm photo posting, I'm going out of my frickin' mind, I hate this, and I'm not making any money. That's why. Question. Um, do you think those numbers would change uh, based on the genre of music? Um, no. This is 400 artists across genre spectrum. Now, you folkies with the argument that no one who listens you know, to my kind of music is online, I will tell you that the fastest growing demographic on Facebook right now is women between the ages of 55 and 65. Anyone know why? Grandkids. Their daughters are posting photos of their grandkids and they want in on the action. And then when they get there, it's the same as with all of us. Oh, there's my college sweetheart. Oh, there's my babysitter from when I was 12. Oh, there is some interesting something to read. And then they're hooked. 600 million of us logging into Facebook. A lot. OK, next slide. Uh, Ariel. Yes. What were the, uh, the next three highest revenues there? Oh, OK, we can go back just really quickly, because um, I want to get to the Facebook yes. and Twitter slides. This is fascinating, too. The purple piece is a Google search. 14% of all sales originated out of Google search. How many of you use Google Analytics? Google Analytics is one of the most powerful tools and it's free and available on the internet. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, just Google Google Analytics. There's a great little four minute video you can watch, but what it basically is, is it's a roadmap to the rest of the internet. How many people use Google every day? 100% of us, every day. We go there, we're looking for stuff all the time. And what's fascinating to study is what are people Googling to get to you? Who knows the answer to that question for themselves as an artist sitting here? What are they Googling? Uh, generally the band's name. The band's name. Who Googles themselves consistently? Who doesn't? This is not an exercise in ego, people. This is an exercise in how much money should I be earning? Google yourself and look at the results. Are you happy with them? Are you in control of that message? Is there something weird showing up there that you don't want your fans to see? You can control that. Who else knows what, what leads Google to them? Band name. Band name. Anyone got a not band name scenario here? Lyrics. Me. Lyrics. What are the lyrics about? What, was, what are the lyrics about that they're finding? What are they looking for? They're looking for the song. They're looking for songs. So they heard their, this, are, are they on? The song? What is a song, right? I work for a band called Shana Zade and the Catch. This band won the jackpot last year. They got in a Ford commercial. The whole song. And then it like zooms down into the dashboard and shows their name. It was like gold given to them. Did they put the lyrics anywhere online? No. Did they put the word Ford Focus on their website? No. Did they give the song away so that people that were frantically, desperately going to Google to try to find them? No. That was $3,000 they spent on me. They'll never get back. That was tens of thousands of missed opportunities. Okay, So that's Google. And you can find out really interesting things. Like I always thought people would be Googling music publicity or music publicists to find me. They're not. They're Googling music promotion. They're Googling free publicity tips. They're Googling, weirdly, New York City-based publicist. I didn't even know where I lived made any bit of difference. But it makes a difference for people that are coming to me. SEO. Correct. And that's a whole other seminar. But this is what I call putting yourself in harm's way. It's like when you do something on stage and everybody goes, yeah, you're going to do more of it. To me, the, the big deal that I just keep seeing all the time is this is your career. I, I, we teach every year at the New Music Seminar. I, um, and I'll say this in a nice way. <laughs> new Music Seminar, what would you expect? something, the new trends coming down the line and all that. Yet everybody in the audience, and there's literally 1,500 musicians that come, and still to this day, 1,495 of them come trying to hand off a CD to some guy that's going to change their life. Sales. They, sa sales. Yes. Because they, they don't want to control their own. They want, they want a sugar daddy. They want someone to put them on the radio. They want someone to make their, their life easy. Because I'm an artist, man. I can't do that stuff. Uh, the, the two places you can control is your website, what you're doing online, and your show. 
I can't control that the radio programmer will not play my CD. I'll, I, I can yell at him, I can buy him flowers, I can, I can take him to dinner. One of those better work. But, <laughs> but the point is,